Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about React plus Flow. Uh, what Flow does is provides uh, static type checking in JavaScript. And since React is a JavaScript framework, you can use it with React. Uh, there are multiple options available if you want to do type checking in React. Uh, you can use prop types, which we covered in the last tutorial. It's much lighter weight, but it doesn't provide a lot of coverage. Uh, but the flow is just the right amount. It's comprehensive plus kind of lightweight as well. And there's a third option, uh, which is TypeScript, uh, which is comprehensive and a little bit heavier. We're going to cover that in next tutorial. I'm going to show you how to install flow, uh, how to configure it, and then we're going to do some coding where I'll show you how to do type checking. And by the way, uh, this video is part of a much larger series on React. And if you haven't been following the series, you can do so. I'll provide a link here um, in the corner. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. All right, so let's get started. Um, I have created this project using Create React App, so we're gonna work inside here. But before we start, we need to actually install uh, Flow Package. And the way to do it is, I would, I'm, I'm using Yarn. So I would say Yarn Add. Um, the name of the package is flow-bin and I want to install as a dev dependency because you are doing the type checking it won't be a part of the the, the bundle that you uh, that you're gonna have part of the code right so you know you want to have it as a dev dependency if I run this it should install it which should take a few seconds all right so it's been installed I should see the in in the dev dependency flow bin uh, I need to do one more step here I would to add inside the script I need to add uh, flow so this would allow us to run the flow scripts here and now that we have it we can initialize a flow let's just clear this and I can say yarn run flow in it and this should actually create configuration for the flow all right so if I if I go here, it has created a .flow config file, which is kind of empty right now. We'll fit it up later um, as we go along, but let's just move on. All right, so I think our project is ready uh, and the flow is there. Now, it's a template project, so it doesn't have much, right? Um, so let's run the, the flow script to see what really happens. npm, if I do yarn run, flow and it it would say done there are no errors and that is because it didn't really check anything because I haven't really told uh, flow to to check specific files uh, for that there's one trick uh, let's say if I want to check types in this file app.js uh, one way to do it is if I go on the top of the file and add a comment like this and call it flow this should take care of it so now if I run yarn run flow it should find an error says failed because um, every component you are supposed to uh, provide types of its prop and state we haven't done it so let's say if you not gonna provide anything you can simply do this um, this means it's an empty there is no props or state right so now if I run it yarn and flow it should fix the problem there are no errors okay so this is how it works however this is quite tedious to add this to every single file so I need to configure it so that I can tell it to, to check the specific files so what I do, I'll remove this, and if I go back to the flow config, here I need to tell it that okay, I need to what I need to check. Uh, so here for the options, I would say all equal to true. But there is a problem because when I say all equal to true, it will check everything. Uh, including the node modules and you might have lots of files JS file inside the node module which are third-party uh, libraries and you don't want to check 
flow checking all those files because it might find a lot of issues there, right? So you need to tell it that, okay, don't do that. So here uh, they have provided ignore. So we can actually tell it to ignore all, everything from the node package. So here I would say dot star and node modules. And I would say just ignore everything from there. Now if I run this, it should still complain because there may be some other, other places. So one of the places is there's this register service worker. Unfortunately, whenever you create it, it has this register service worker. So I need to tell it to ignore that as well. So which is inside source file. All right. So now if I run it again, all right, it has some more failures. Yes, uh, there's an index.js file. So we need to tell that one as well. Index.js file. And then we have a few more before we can get started. Let's see now what's what's complaining. Yes, the tests. Because we have uh, this test folder, any file that that is uh, test.js. All right, finally no errors. So this config is right now. All right, to check the types, let's start with our, by creating a component which we can use inside the app and then do the some type checking, okay? Uh, so for that, I'm just gonna copy the app component here and I'm gonna call it test component. Here, I can use this test component inside the app. So you can say test. Now let's pass some properties here. Uh, we can create a property called, let's say, string which is a string i'm going to call it tech sith okay so i'm providing this uh, property string inside the test component so i need to make sure that um, it's a right type so how do i do that so there are things called uh, type guards and the way you write is type and then the name of the type guard so i'm going to call it uh, test uh, props because it's the props of the test component, right? So here, I'm just gonna say string is type string. That's all I need. And I need to pass this test guard here, uh, this uh, type guard here as an argument because this means what type of property I'm passing here. So inside here, if I just simply do, let's say, and inside I would do this, uh, prop props dot uh, str I forgot to close the h1 tag okay so no errors uh, because it's expecting type string and it's getting the type string but what if I just change this to a number for fun okay so I'm passing string but it's expecting number so now if I do this it should complain as you can see, it's complaining that incap incompatible with number because I'm providing string. So let's change it back. All right, so this is how you can check the types. Now let's do a few more um, to see what happens. So for number, I would simply do the same thing, number equal to. Now let if, and let's add that type here. Num is a number type. Okay, but what if I don't provide, what if I don't pass number here? Then what would happen? Uh, I'm using number here inside the test component, but I'm not passing as a property. But my type card said that uh, there should be two properties. One is string and one is number. So now if I run this, it complains that it's missing number. So to fix this, if I simply put a question mark, so by default, uh, if I whatever I define here in the type guard means I need to provide these properties, otherwise it would complain. Uh, so they are required by default. If I wanna make it optional, I have to use the question mark after the, the name of the property. So now if I run it, 
it should pass. All right, so now it says no errors. So this is how do, you can do optional. Um, now let's do something different. So instead of um, primitive type, let's do an array. So I'm just gonna create a property called ARY, which is an array, and it's an array of numbers. So here, for, for array, I would have to say uh, capital A and array and then I have to provide a type a number type say it like this and here I can use um, h1 since it's an array I can print it using a map function I can say this dot props dot array dot map and I can just do well as well it's gonna print like a all the vowels. Now what if I want to have some sort of default value? So if I don't provide it, it should have a default value, right? Well, you can do that. Um, so let's say use it for string. So the syntax for it, all static, and then you would say default uh, props equal to, and here you would pick the prop that you like. So I'm gonna use string to have a default value. And let's say the default value is uh, text Okay, so now if I remove, if I don't provide a string here, it should automatically have text as default. And this almost becomes an optional now, right? Since I'm providing a default value. So now there are no errors. Okay, so this is how you. What about state? Uh, let's say if I have a state here and state equal to and let's have a message as a state and it says uh, hi now we need to also cover this because there is a state we need to say okay what kind of what type of the state is so we need to create type guard for that as well so i'm going to say test and since it's a state i'm going to say test state equal to and so I'd have a message and it's type string. And I need to pass it here next to the prompt. So I would say test uh, state. Now if I run this, it should be fine. And let's add that state here, h1 message. Now what if I wanna use a refs? So refs are a reference type which allows you to actually access um, a particular element. So if I want to add, and I have a tutorial on if you want to check it out, I have a, I'll provide a link here. So I can add ref, ref like this, h, uh, it's a callback function, and I can say uh, this dot h1 equal to h, because I haven't really defined h1. Usually you don't have to define it, but since we are using flow, it is it wants us to define this h1. So here I can define this h1. And what is the type of h1? Well, h1 is actually an element, HTML element, right? So I have to say HTML, um, it's heading element, right? If I did that, it should basically be fine. Let's see what happens. It should it should have one problem though. Oh yeah, usually you need to have a default value, but I haven't provided it. So if I put a question mark, which means uh, either the value of H1 is this or null. So as if I've done H1 equal to null here, it should be fine. So we covered a lot of things here, but let's do a few more. What if we have a functional component? So here I have a class component, and I can have another component called function component. So I can do const func component equal to, and this is my function component. And I have some props here, and I can say return 
props dot let's also have a prop call string here which we haven't created yet but we will so I can use this component inside my app and I can provide string also uh, tech sith so that should get here but I haven't really told flow that what kind of property is string so I need to say it is um, actually a string so I can do the same thing here I can provide type type card and I can call it I'm running out of names so I'll just name whatever <laughs> and this should be let's say string right now the way to pass it here remember in the in the component we did this way here I can simply do this and this should suffice so there are no errors and we don't have to worry about the state here because function component doesn't don't have state so I mean it, there's way more to to flow than than what we covered today because there's so much that you know uh, I would take much longer time um, but I covered most of the basic stuff that required to um, move around state props and everything else right all right so I hope you learned something from this tutorial and if you did please like subscribe and provide a constructive comment and you can support the channel uh, via patreon I'll provide a link here and uh, you can also translate the video if you have time uh, to your native language I'll provide a link in the description on how to do that and thank you